alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen. Nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His entire household, all his companions, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of them and every single one of us too. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and grant us goodness. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, the most beautiful story mentioned in the Quran is the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam. It is mentioned within one surah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept it the only story that is in such great detail all in one place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off by making mention of a dream that was seen by Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam. And we have so many lessons to learn from this. We actually have so many lessons. However, we'd like to look at the lessons from a different angle. What should we do? How should we look at it in order to learn a lesson from it in order to be able to save ourselves from the destruction, the calamity, the envy, the jealousy that took place at that particular time. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. The first point I'd like to raise verse number five of Surah Yusuf, where the father is telling his son, Yaqub alayhi salam, the prophet Jacob may peace be upon him, is telling Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, he is telling Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam that do not relate this dream of yours to your brothers. Do not relate this dream of yours to your own brothers because they might become jealous of you. What do I learn from this? Allah says, قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تَقْصُ الصُّرُؤِيَاكَ عَلَىٰ إِخْوَتِكَ فَيَكِيدُوا لَكَ كَيْدًا إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لِلْإِنسَانِ عَدُوٌ مُّبِينٌ He says, O oh my beloved son, do not relate this dream to your brothers, for they may plot against you, they may plan against you. Indeed, shaytan is an outright enemy. He is a clear enemy of man. So he's not blaming his children, he's blaming shaytan. People are good, generally. Shaytan is bad. Shaytan makes people do things that is unacceptable. So what I learned from this, for me to be able to say, to be saved from the jealousy, from the plot of a person who perhaps doesn't like me, I don't need to tell the whole world everything about my life. The weakness we have in today's day and age, any little thing that happens in my life, I want the whole world to know it. So I will put it up on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and BBM and what have you and WhatsApp chat groups. And it's the juiciest of gossip. And everyone's supposed to know that I bought a new car. It's a BMW 12 series. Subhanallah. I think you just realized there isn't a 12 series. Well, I have one. Subhanallah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. So the point being raised on a more serious note is you don't have to relate everything nice that happens to you to everyone. Not all will be happy upon your happiness. Not everyone. Sometimes you need to know if you have made a profit, if you have made business, for example, a good deal. If you are getting married, there are certain people you might want to tell in advance or earlier than others. Some you don't even want them to know. Trust me, they might spoil things for you. Shaitan will come to them and make them plan your downfall. And guess who gave them the information? You. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So learn to be secretive about your matters, your affairs. There is a narration wherein the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ista'inu ala qadai hawa'ijikum bil kitman. Seek assistance to complete or to fulfill your affairs by being secretive about them. You know, it might be a slightly weaker narration, but the meaning is absolutely correct. If you want assistance to achieve what you'd like, be secretive. Because you don't know people can become jealous of you. Not everyone will be sad at your loss. Some people might rejoice when you are struggling. You don't need the whole world to know I'm sick or I'm not well or I'm going in for an operation. You might want some people to know. You might want them to make dua for you. But others will rejoice at the fact that you are sick. They will say, Oh Allah, I thank you for accepting my dua. Finally, this man is sick. Astaghfirullah. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So that's a powerful lesson to be able to save ourselves from harm that we would inflict by our own mouths. We are the ones who gave information to the people. We made them jealous of us. And sadly, very sadly, my brothers and sisters, the world today teaches you exactly that. Teaches you to boast, to brag, to make a big deal of things, to show off. And this is the reason why even those who don't have things, they want to show like they do. Subhanallah. They want to pretend. I know of a couple that went into a convenience store and they were testing out all the clothing, taking all photos with that clothing. And that was only testing. But the world thought, wow, you've got nice clothes. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. They didn't even purchase anything. They wasted the day of all those at the convenience store testing things like rich people and their intention was never to buy. It was just to put up some lovely photos with some shoes that I can't even afford. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about something else. Do you know your children come to you with tales? People come to you with stories. And a lot of the times I've heard people say, you know, children don't lie. I actually think you need to revise that. They do. They do. From a very early age, they can create tales. They can make stories that didn't even exist. Go and see the children. I don't know what children you are talking about. Some people like to fish information from children. So they ask them, do your daddy and mommy fight at home? An innocent child says, yeah, my father bashes my father up, you know, and nothing happened of that nature. The little child was watching too many movies. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And the whole world comes to believe that story and everyone thinks that you're about to be divorced and there's nothing like that. Be careful. Do not believe everything you hear. Be very, very careful. Sometimes with adults, we hear tales, we hear stories, we hear WhatsApp messages floating around saying the Kaaba will be making tawaf. When someone asked me, is it true that the Kaaba will be making tawaf seven times around the, uh, sorry, the, the moon will make tawaf around the Kaaba seven times at 3.25 a.m. And I said, after that, the moon will also shave its head. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. It's a tale, it's a fib, and we forward it. And we actually get excited by forwarding such tales. My brothers and sisters, be careful. Worse than that is when you have destroyed the honor of a Muslim by spreading falsehood. Even if it was true, you were not meant to spread it. People say, you know, this person is like that. This one is like that. They went through this. They pinched that. This man did that. This one killed this one. That one murdered this one. This one slandered that one and so on. Why? Either you authenticate it thoroughly or drop the story. In fact, even before that, ask yourself, is it connected to me? Should I really be interested in this? Does it affect me in any way? If the answer is no, leave it. Don't even bother authenticating it. It doesn't affect you. It doesn't bother you. You know, our brains become clogged with information we don't need. So when it comes to the Salah, we cannot concentrate. Just like our phones filled with images and videos that we really don't need. Now you are worried because the memory is full and your phone has become sluggish. The same applies to ourselves. Too many unnecessary things. So when we say Allahu Akbar, the mind goes where? It starts wondering, Ooh, that man, I just heard he struck a deal of two million rands. Ooh, I wonder. Subhanallah. This time of Salah is not the time for that. But look at your processor. Look at how it's processing because it's clogged with something that is absolutely unnecessary. So Allah says verse number 16 of Surah Yusuf regarding the children of Yusuf alayhi, of Yaqub alayhi salam, the brothers of the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, who came and lied to their father. They said, oh, our father, we're going to take this child. We're going to play with our brother. You don't ever send him with us. And the father says, I fear, I fear that a wolf might come and eat him. At night, they went, they hatched their plan. They threw him into the bottom of a dark pit. And do you know what they did? And they came to their father at night crying with tears. Crocodile tears. They were crying. They said, Ya Abana inna the Habana Nastabiku Watarakna Yusufa in Damata ina Faakala Hudhib. O our father, we went with Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. We were racing while we left him on the side, and the wolf came and ate him. Subhanallah, what lies? So the lesson I learn is your children can tell a lie to you. Not everything they will tell you is the truth. And over and above that, other people around you, no matter how pious they may seem, they may have wrong information that they are handing to you. Even if I were to tell you something about another person, 
you need to authenticate it before you take it from me. It needs to be first hand information or you need to know this is probably a lie. People say things about you. People say things about me. People have said things about the prophets of Allah. People have said things about Allah. Do you think you and I are going to be saved? Not at all. But the weakest person is he who believes everything he hears. Be careful. You will start hating a lovely person solely because you heard a dirty rumor about them that was actually false. It was created out of jealousy, out of hatred or any other qualities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. This is why we say, save yourselves. When you read the story of the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, don't just say, wow, what a beautiful story. What a lovely dream. Ask yourselves, what lesson do I learn from this? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how this innocent child, absolutely gorgeous, absolutely handsome. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how he was in a pit, a dark pit. But guess what? He was always a happy child. Allahu Akbar. He always made the most of whatever situation he was in. Have you ever heard any narration, weak or fabricated? any narration or any verse of the Quran that says Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam was thrown into the well and he was depressed there. He lost hope in Allah. He became a person who thought he's going to die now. Not at all. Never. He was happy. He seized the opportunity. He was looking forward to being saved. He knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help would come. It was conviction. You know what conviction is known as? The highest level of conviction is known as Ihsan. You and I know Islam, you're a Muslim. Iman, you're a mu'min. Iman means belief within your heart. It's a slightly higher level than Islam. Islam here referring to the practical or the actions that you would engage in. When they say the pillars of Islam are five, they mention that which you can see a person do with your own eyes. Whether they declare the shahada or they fulfill their salah or they abstain from food in Ramadan or they give uh, charities to the poor or they are going for hajj. Actions, you can see them. When it comes to the pillars of Iman, you cannot see. They are all in the heart. Six pillars of Iman. Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubi. I believe in Allah, in the angels, in the books, in the prophets, etc, etc. You don't know that. I'm just claiming it. It's inside the heart. It's between me and Allah. But there's one level higher than that. In the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he asked, Mal ihsan. So the Prophet says, Ihsan is the highest level of conviction such that when I'm worshipping Allah, I'm convinced it's either as though I can see him or if not, then I know for a fact he is watching me and he can see me. So when I say Allahu Akbar, I know Allah is watching me. I'm convinced that's called Ihsan. So Allah says, if a person has the quality of Ihsan and the quality of Taqwa, which would come hand in hand, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that person authority as well as knowledge. You know, in one of the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, towards the end, Allah says, Be conscious of Allah and Allah will teach you. Allah will give you the knowledge. You really desperately want sound knowledge? Be conscious of Allah, develop taqwa, develop piety. Allah will give you that knowledge. As simple as that. And in these verses, Allah says, verse number 22. When he got to the peak of his age, we blessed him with authority as well as with knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, the decisiveness in his decision making was a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, this is the way we recompense those who are muhsineen, who are good. And at the same time, they have developed the quality of ihsan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So I need to protect myself from ignorance. I need to protect myself from losing the knowledge I have. I need to save myself from losing the wisdom that Allah may bestow upon me by being a person who is upright. Because if I am sinful, if I turn away from Allah, I will lose all of these things. And I will think that I have knowledge, but I don't. I will start disliking good people because I am bad myself. When I have bad qualities, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not guide me to distinguish right from wrong. I will make friends of enemies and enemies of friends. And years later, I may regret if I'm lucky.
or I might die in a condition that I've lost. So my brothers and sisters, a beautiful, powerful lesson. Let's learn to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, I'd like to draw your attention to a crime that people accuse each other of sometimes. And that is the crime of adultery. It's a bad sin. It's a major sin. One is, yes, to commit the sin. To commit the sin is very bad. You and I know. But to accuse someone else of it is an even bigger sin. It's an even bigger sin because that person is innocent. What about if it was rape? Rape is even worse than adultery. You and I know it has the factor of force. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. To rape, that is actually such a grave crime in the Sharia. And subhanallah, to accuse someone of it is an even greater crime. And the best of the best at that particular time was Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. He was accused of rape. He was accused of attempting rape. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Imagine how serious a crime it was. Now from this, we, we achieve a little bit of comfort to say people have accused us of so many things. All of us here, every one of us, even those listening across the globe, all of us have been accused of little things, minor things. I don't think we've really been accused of something so great. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen those who've been accused of massive crimes that they haven't committed. Don't believe tales. If it was today, we would have had it on WhatsApp and BBM and everywhere else on Facebook and Instagram would be a buzz that this person committed a rape. Yet they didn't. They didn't. They were totally innocent. This woman was trying for the man and because she didn't get what she wanted, she started accusing him. That's what happens. To this day, it happens where a woman tries to perhaps get close to you or maybe a man tries to get close to you and because he or she cannot or failed, and they feel dented in their ego. They start blaming, you know, this woman, watch out. She's loose. Astaghfirullah. She's not loose at all. You're the one who's loose. You're the one who attempted and because she kicked you out and she put you in your place. You now want to have bad words to say about that woman. It's a double crime. One is you tried your luck. And when Allah protected that person, you now went to damage that person's reputation. You won't manage. You might succeed for a short space of time. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things clear. So let's listen to what happened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this woman had accused Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. And she had said, مَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ أَرَادَ بِأَهْلِكَ سُوءًا إِلَّا أَنْ يُسْجَنَ أَوْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ What is the recompense of the one who intended ill or immor immoral acts against your own family, against your wife? So she's asking her husband, shouldn't it only be either imprisonment or some painful punishment? And she knows the man was innocent. But Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, what did he say at the time? Before we make mention of what he said, let me tell you something interesting. Allah says that the women of that town, their mouths were all moving and their lips were moving, tongues wagging. With what? With the story. Hey, did you hear the latest gossip? Allah says, وَقَالَ نِسْوَةٌ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ the women of the town, they began to talk that the wife of this noble man, this man in authority here, she tried her luck or whatever the tale was. Some of them had the right side of the story and the others had the wrong side of the story. So the point raised here is, look at how Allah makes mention of the tale. That was a time when there was no phone, no mobile, no internet, no telephone. No telex, no fax. Imagine. And at that time already the whole town knew about it. Astaghfirullah, what a tale. May Allah safeguard us. Really, my brothers, my sisters, when there are good things, spread them. When there are bad things, delete the message. I challenge you. When you have a message someone sends to you, if it is bad, ask yourself carefully. It's Ramadan. Wallahi, this is a challenge. We need to save ourselves from the punishment of Allah. Honestly, in this world and the next. A bad message comes. It's either a video clip, an audio clip, or just a forward or an image, something. And do you know what? It is evil, bad, sinful, hurtful about someone else, or just plain sin, pornography, whatever else it may be. 
I challenge you for the sake of Allah, for the sake of your Jannah, just delete it. Allahu Akbar. And don't bat an eyelid about it. Delete it and you will save yourself. Aren't we speaking about how to save ourselves? Here it is. Delete the message. And Wallahi, when you have a good message, read it, smile, forward it to one or two people. If it didn't help you, it might help someone else. I have someone who sends me a message every Sunday night and every Wednesday night to say, do not forget to fast tomorrow. It is a sunnah every week. Subhanallah. And I know if I, for example, am not going to fast, but I forward the message to someone, perhaps from the 10,000 people, if one person or 10 people or 100 people fasted, guess who gets the reward? Well, I know I get a portion of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So brothers and sisters, read a lot of Quran in Ramadan. Inshallah. Read a lot of Quran in Ramadan. You know why I'm telling you that? Now when you open the Quran, you know who's getting a reward for it, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So my brothers and sisters, remember, when it comes to evil, it spreads very fast. It's your duty to cut it. Stop it. Make sure it stops at you, no one else. Delete it. Sometimes you have the courage, send a message back to the person who sent it to you to say, you know, my brother, you know, my sister, please don't forward me these type of messages. Allahu Akbar. It might dent the relationship because people say, I was just joking. I was just joking. That's what they say. They hurt you. They lie. They accuse. They do that which is unacceptable in the eyes of Allah. And then they say, we were just joking. Come on, you can't take a joke. Don't be serious. No, not at all. You don't joke about certain matters. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all. So this was the story. And at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, she told these women, the one woman who is now at the center of this sin, she is telling the other women that, you know what? If this man doesn't do what I want him to do, because they acknowledged, wow, he's a good looking man. Now we understand why you want to do what you want to do. That's what they said. Allahu Akbar. Astaghfirullah. Imagine she's getting the support of the rest of the people rather than them say, Hey, fear Allah, be careful. She had people around her who were telling her, Hey, this is not a human. This is an angel. So she says, now, do you blame me? They say, well, you know what? How can we blame you? Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. My brothers and sisters, this is criminal. It's really unacceptable. One is the sin that is being committed. Two is the people around you encouraging you to carry on with it. You and I need to have friends whom when all is planned to commit a sin, they tell us fear Allah. Be careful. Watch out. Don't do it. I promise you don't do it. Cut it. Leave it. Turn to Allah. Those are your genuine friends. They are but a few. They are but a few. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when he heard this, the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, he heard them discuss that if he doesn't want to commit this act of immorality with me, then I'm going to get him jailed. Do you know what he says? Verse number 33, Surah Yusuf. Oh Allah, it is better for me to be cast into the prison than that which they are calling me towards. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He's asking Allah, Oh Allah, save me from such a crime of immorality. I'd rather go to the jail than to dirty myself. Astaghfirullah. Pause for a moment. Brothers and sisters, we are living in a hypersexual age. You know that. Everything is about sex. Everything. And I tell you what, to protect yourself for the sake of Allah, Wallahi, you will be saved from the prison of the grave and the prison of the hereafter. Here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relating to us the story of an absolutely handsome man. We know Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam was the most handsome. And at the same time, he is saying, Oh Allah, let me rather go to jail. I don't want to do this. Trust me, the looks on a person's face and the nur that they have, a lot of it is connected to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of it is connected to them shunning sin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us nur and don't mistake nur for complexion. Complexion has nothing to do with nur. You can have a person as dark as charcoal, but they have more nur than one who is Caucasian. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So my brothers and sisters, what a powerful lesson. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he was imprisoned as a result. And when he was imprisoned, guess what happened again? 
it was another bad thing. Number one, he was put into the pit. Number two, he was sold in the market. Number three, he was accused. Number four, he was found guilty when he was innocent. Number five, he was jailed. Not once did he say, I think someone did something on me. Let me go and start cutting the lemons and let me start now taking all these rose petals and let me go to the sheikh and I think he's going to show me who's did what on me. That's what we would do today. Wallahi. He had one, two, three, four, five things going wrong in his life. One after the other. Massive things. He never ever complained. He said, oh Allah, I'm happy, man. I'm happy, ya Allah. For as long as you are with me, I'm with you. Everything is okay. Not once did he blame black magic, my mother-in-law. No way. There's no mention of his mother-in-law. Astaghfirullah. Or his sister-in-law. Astaghfirullah. A'udhu Billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in our own issues. Remember, 99% of the issues we go through have nothing to do with someone having done something. It's just a test of Allah. But our weakness of Iman makes us first question. I wonder who did this. You doubt this one, doubt that one. Those closest to you who love you the most sometimes or who love you a lot, who really care for you are the ones whom you start accusing, whom you break a relationship with. Why? Just because your Iman is weak. That's what it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when he was imprisoned, he was a happy man. Subhanallah. Do you know the first thing he spoke about in the prison was gratitude to Allah. There were two people who walked in with him or who were in the cell with him, sharing the cell. They looked at his face. As they saw his face, they said, verse number 36 makes mention of it. We see that you are, you look like a person who is very good. And I told you, Muhsin means a lot of things. It also means a person who has a very high level of conviction, very high level of faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they looked at him and from his face, they could see this man is a pious man. This man is a really good man. So they said, we find you to be a really good person. We've seen dreams. We'd like you to interpret these dreams. He didn't say, okay, here's the meaning of your dream. He was given the knowledge by Allah. But you know what he said? He said, before the food comes to you, the meal comes to you. Don't worry. I'll let you know what you want. But I want to start off telling you Allah has favored me. Allahu Akbar. I want to start off by telling you the favors of Allah upon me. What are the favors of Allah upon me? This is my father. This is my grandfather. This is who we are. All my forefathers are all pious people. And Alhamdulillah, walakinna akthar an nasi la yashkuru. He says, verse number 38, many people are not thankful. Wow, you just thrown into the jail. And you are saying, oh, people are not thankful. I'm so thankful to Allah. Allah saved me. Allah saved me from what? From sin. Allah protected me. Allah's bestowed upon me such beautiful parents, such lovely fathers, forefathers. Wow. My brothers and sisters, at a time when he was going through suffering, according to us, if any one of us was in jail, may Allah safeguard us from being jailed or from the prisons. If any one of us was in it, imagine how depressing it would be. Here is a man smiling, telling people, I really thank Allah. I'm so grateful for whatever Allah has bestowed upon me. What a great lesson. Save yourselves from the depression. Take a look at the positives out of that negative that you think is bogging you down. There definitely have to be positives that come out of that. If you're in loss, if you are suffering in your business, if you are suffering in your health, if you are suffering in any other way, take a look at how it has softened you. It brought you close to Allah. It might have brought the family together. It might have solved so many other problems. Allah has blessed you by giving you so much in terms of positive. Why concentrate on the negatives? Save yourselves that tension. Save yourselves that negative feeling. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your doors. Then he seizes the opportunity of da'wah. He calls them towards Allah. He says, oh, my companions of the prison, do you not know that worshipping one Allah who made you, worship your maker, worship your sustainer, that is far better than worshipping all these other gods and deities that people believe in. Whether they are sticks or stones or other people or anything else, he is telling his inmates, the prisoners with him, saying, you know what? Worship Allah alone. Isn't it better? Worship Allah alone. Many people don't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone should be worshipped. Brothers and sisters, even at that point where he was in the prison, he sees the opportunity to call towards Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. Remember when you call others to Allah, Allah will save you from calamity and difficulty as well. May Allah bless us all. We will continue inshaAllah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. نستغفرك ونتوب إليك